What's up? It's Actors Daily Bread, episode 129. And gosh, this is day three of seven for my experienced actors. Today, we're talking about embracing your power on set, plus some real talk. I'm so excited to have a special guest, Melissa Blue Ward with Rock Your Real. But before I get to her, y'all, I forgot to go to live on Instagram. Hang on. The past three days, the past two days, I've been going live on Instagram first because I forget. You see the trend here? There's a, someone forgetting. So as you guys jump on, give me some hearts, give me some thumbs up. Um, Just hang tight, you guys. How have you been enjoying the past couple of days? Let me know where you are watching from. Rep your city. Come on, Instagram. Did anyone else go through the Instagram thing last night where your Instagram just shut down? I was at an event for 911 for the uh, at the Television Academy, and um, my Instagram was like, "No, ma'am, we're done." Like my phone is right now. Hang tight, you guys. Leave comments. Say hello. Um, TC, I'm here. Thank you for watching. Hang tight, you guys. Can you not see my face? Because I have my other computer on and I can see my face. TC, let me know if you can see me. Just give me one second because I promised Instagram I would go live on Instagram. Let me see if I can make this happen. But we got something juicy, so hang tight. I know East Coast is late, but y'all, y'all will be okay. <laughs> Okay, IG. Oh, I'm so sorry. It's not working. Melissa, it's not working. You're not, you're, they can't see you, but I am talking to you. Hang tight, you guys. I'm trying to make sure Instagram, my phone. Mm, they're going to be mad at me. Hey, Ernest. TC, can you not see me? Or you have technical issues? <laughs> Let me give Instagram one more second. And if not, honey, this is going to be what's going to be. That's why it's so hard. Um, okay. I'm sorry, Instagram. They're going to have to wait. I'm sorry. All right. So I'm going to keep going. All right. So listen, guys. So all this week, for the next, I've been telling you, for the next seven days, we're talking about, we're talking to my group two actors. If this, first of all, if this is your first time watching Actors Daily Bread, I want to welcome you. This is Actors Daily Bread, where I teach you how to crush your auditions, book more work, and live a life that you love. I'm Christine Horn, professional working actress of 20 plus years. I'm a life and career coach for actors. And I am the founder of the number one virtual training center for actors, which is the Booking Magnet Academy. And so I teach all this stuff. And I teach a lot of brand Nubians. I call y'all my brand Nubian actors who are trying to figure out how to get an agent, how to get started. You're like, I don't have a demo reel. I can't get an agent. I have a huge treat for you today. My third tier, you guys are working consistently, but you may need just other help. But I'm talking to my group two actors today. I'm talking to my group two actors. Um, and so that's what you guys are all about. Um, TC, um, Trafina, Ernest, let TC know if y'all can see me because I can see me. So um, TC, you may want to try another browser, close Facebook, come back in. Um, so somebody let her know if you guys can see me too, but listen, today we're talking about embracing your power on set. And, you know, I have my special guests waiting, you know, patiently really, um, backstage, <laughs> but I'm gonna bring her on in a second. But first I really just want to talk to you guys about what I've been talking about this week. You know, yesterday I talked to you about, um, what did I talk about yesterday? Oh, from going from Broadway to TV, the day before was about getting a guest star mentality. And the reason why I have my special guest today is I met Melissa, you'll meet her in a second, but I met her over the weekend at a mutual friends party. And we just got to talking and you know, I'm always looking out for you guys. Like, what do my actors need to know? What's the biggest mistake they make? And what's this and this? And I was like, I need you on my show. So she's going to join me in a second. But, you know, building on top of that, when you know, I'm going to bring Melissa on because she she's an actress as well. So hang one second, y'all. Let me bring my special guest. Let me hide this. I see all your comments. Hey, Jen. Hey, Trafina. Hey, Arisha. Hey, TC. Trafina. Uh, Ernest. Yes. Okay. Let me hide this. Let me come here. Melissa, you are on. Hey. Welcome, Every Give me some hearts. Say hi, Melissa, in the comments. <laughs> I have the Blue Ward here with me. 
And she's an actress, she's a filmmaker, she's an editor, she's a business owner, she's just super fierce. So first of all, welcome, Melissa. Thank you for thank joining you. Actors Daily Bread. Yay, thank you, I'm so happy to be here, this is awesome. I was, I know this is so like impromptu. We met, sat, was Saturday, was it Saturday? I think so, yeah. yeah. We met yeah. Saturday and this is Women of Action, honey. Yes. Doing something days yes. later. <laughs> yes. I said it to my accountability partner, Keena Ferguson, whose birthday it was, or whose party it was, her belated birthday, and bringing such a beautiful, wasn't it? It was just a beautiful group of women. It was unbelievable. Women. Like, I, I felt like I, there was maybe 25 people there, and I felt like I could have been best friends with each and every <laughs> woman. And I thought, I said to Keena, I was like, wow, you have a group of friends, like my group of friends, where we like, like women and, and people who are, kind of in charge and, and this type of thing. Hi, Trafina. <laughs> um, you know, we, we tend to attract, like, like attracts like, basically. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> well, as you can see, the comments are coming in and saying hi, make, make sure you welcome. This is, you know, my community, FYI, is called the Hollywood Bound Actors. If you are not part of the Hollywood Bound Actors Facebook group, you need to join us. It's a free group. Just put Hollywood Bound Actors in and you'll join us. But okay. Melissa, awesome group of actors who are all at different stages awesome. in their career. And even though this group, this week, I'm really talking to my group two actors, my experienced actors, even some of them are at a place where um, they're, they need new content. Maybe they took a break. Mm -hmm. now, maybe they had kids. Maybe they got married. Now they're coming back in. So their footage is old. Or yeah. maybe they never, all they did was really low budget stuff. And so they don't have that either. Um, so you just know that you're talking to different levels here. Right. A lot of my, um, a lot of shout out to all of you, but a lot of you guys I know are in Atlanta, Chicago, New York, LA, some <laughs> Texas. So we got a little bit of that going on. Nice. East Coast yeah. represent. I, I moved here to LA uh, just under three years ago from Virginia Beach. So like this, the Southeastern market and that kind of like East Coast market, I'm, I'm definitely very familiar with. Awesome. Yeah. And, and yeah. since you're hearing that, I, I, um, I'm going to give you the floor just for a second. And I'm going to, you guys who are watching, hit the share button. Don't be, y'all, don't be stingy. Don't be stingy. <laughs> you got an actor friend who needs to see this. Listen, I couldn't get it on Instagram tonight. Some, I know Instagram people are going to be mad at me because I even said I was going to be on Instagram. It just was not working. Um, but Melissa, give us some, a little bit of background on who you are sure. and, Tell us a little about your company, and then we're going to tie it all together with what I'm talking about, about embracing your power on set, just so everybody stay tuned. It's coming. And make sure you rep your city. Say hi to Melissa as she's talking. All right. Go uh, ahead. Um, so I have a degree in musical theater, so I definitely started out in the theater world. Um, and I, in school, never got a chance to do any sort of camera acting because my school was so large that like the, the regular acting people got the camera classes and then the musical theater kids got the dance classes. But I had graduated from school and I was working on a cruise ship and I was doing, you know, shows around town. Um, and I was able to get an audition for like one of those reenactment shows, <laughs> which, which, which films, uh, you know, back when those shows actually had actors who were like acting in scenes, it was great. And I booked the job, got a lead role. It was so cool. And I know, right? Like, yay. And, mm -hmm. um, and when I was on set, I was like, this, this is what I want to do. This is so much better than theater for me. And it was just, it was like, it kicked off for me sort of the, the desire to do film and television acting. Um, so I did, you know, I, I've acted for a long, long time. Um, and then about three years ago, we moved out here to L.A. to sort of uh, further what we were doing. Um, and I run a company now called Rock Your Reel, which is a we make custom demo reel scenes for actors. So we take a very measured and um, very detailed approach to getting you and filming you material that feels like it's coming from current TV shows or films uh, so that when people watch it, they go, what is this from? 
and then it really shows you off. And, um, and yeah, so that's, that's the company I do and run <laughs> along with the production company with a friend of mine. So awesome. 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 And I'm just going to let everybody know, I, I did finally connect to Instagram. So Instagram, you're like, what are y'all, what is Christine doing? Why are you quiet? Instagram, <laughs> we had some technical issues getting on live, but if you want to come on over to Facebook, I'm interviewing Melissa Blue Ward with Rock Your Real. And today okay. we're talking to um, our group, two actors again, all this week about elevating yourself on set. And we're talking about your demo reels. And so if you want to see my inter my Melissa, who I'm interviewing, come on over to my Facebook page because I don't know how to do all that. Like we're, we're doing a split screen on Facebook. So you're only going <laughs> to hear me talk on Instagram, but if you want to see us and hear the whole thing, come on over to Facebook, unfortunately. So Melissa just int introduced herself to my wonderful audience. So this is what we're talking about. And you can just kind of be here. You know, there's a difference. And I know as an actress, Melissa, you know, this, there's a difference between co-star mentality and guest star mentality. Right. So yeah, you know, I love, you know, as most of you know, a lot of you know, I just played Harriet Tubman on. Um, yeah, you did. And you were brilliant. You were so good. I gushed on her when I met her this Saturday. I just went on for like 10 minutes about how great she is. <laughs> and I thank you for that. And I love my director, John Showalter. Shout out to him. But, you know, there were some co-stars we had on the, sh on the show. You know, I was a, a huge guest star that episode, but we had some co-stars. And I always love to watch directors to, to see what kind of juicy nuggets they're going to drop. And we had some co-stars. And sometimes there'll be moments where... As a co-star, your job is to just show up, say your lines, go home, don't hold up the pro the progress of anybody else, right? And so the director, John, he would say to, um, I remember specifically one actor, and this isn't a bad thing. This is just taking note. Shout out to Tarnu. This is your moment. Whenever you watch this, um, he was Tarnu was trying to take, and I hope you don't get mad at me for shouting you out because hey, you're awesome. He was he was trying to take some extra beats in the moment. And the director said, don't make it a meal. Just, you know, let it out. And so what I want you guys to know is as group two, as my guest star series regular preppers, once you get to that stage, your job is to make it a meal. Your job is to bring something to the table, right? You don't just show up and do, you know, do a couple of lines, be checked out, have not done any character development. Your job is to, is to make it a meal is to take your beats. What's, what's layered under there. And so you're expected to bring food to the table. And I want you to just hold on to that, but know what those two worlds are. Am I showing up as a co-star? Just get it out, eat a snack. It's like having three almonds, Melissa, and be like, oh, <laughs> Or you can take the almonds and be like, I'm going to take a bite. Mm. I'm going to like almonds. savor the almonds. Good, right? We're making that almond a meal. And it's like, it don't have to, sometimes, sometimes your roles are snacks. Sometimes they're just a few, that's going to sound bad. Just a few nuts, right? <laughs> I'm not going to go there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna go there. Oh, God, my audience knows me, right? But but seriously, oh. sometimes it is a meal. And for you to make the shift, even when you have a large co-star, I want to challenge you guys to start thinking of it as a meal. And the reason why I brought Melissa on tonight is because she talks about actors hiring her. And listen, let me break this down. So for the, some of you who maybe you're, like I said, you're in this transition, you're coming back in the game, or you're trying to refresh your footage and you need a reel. And you, these days you need video footage, point blank, period. And I know a lot of my Atlanta actors hired, they have just different companies that do it. You know, you can hire a company like Melissa's company, Rock Your Reel, or another company that can put together, uh, write a script for you and make it seem the, the production value will be so high and you get to showcase yourself. Oops, sorry, Instagram. You get to showcase yourself in a way that says, man, this actor is polished. This actor knows what they're doing, even though they may not have books a uh, show that, you know, is featuring them. They knew enough. They invested in themselves enough to, to present themselves in this way. But here's the juicy part, you guys. And make sure you say hi if you're just jumping on. I asked Melissa the other day when I met her, what is the number one mistake or the biggest thing that you see when an actor comes to you and they're like, hey, I want to hire you to, 
do this, you know, create this scene for me. And what did you tell me, Melissa? My, well, it's funny because I've been thinking about this question uh, for also today. But what I told you um, was I think one of the biggest mistakes that people make when they're creating reels is they are being too general. Mm. So what I mean by that is if somebody comes to me and says, I want to do two comedy scenes. And then they don't give me anything else because they don't know. They, they haven't really thought quite through the process enough to be able to say, oh, okay, well, I want a single cam sitcom and I want it to feel like it's in the vein of Modern Family or I want it to feel like it's in the vein of The Mick or you know any of those other things. Um, or if somebody comes to me and says, uh, I want to do a drama. Oh my gosh, that's so broad. What kind of drama do you want to do? And specifically in that kind of drama, what kind of character are you playing in that drama? Right. So the more specific you can be about what it is you're offering, what it is your casting is, what it is you're selling, the easier it will be to get you and create for you footage that is really, really going to show you off and really, um, uh-oh, can you still hear me? I can still hear you. Your, oh, my your, camera stops. Your face is frozen, so I'm going to come oh, back. no. I'm going to okay, come back. Well, uh, I'll just keep talking and maybe it'll come back. Come on, camera. Everybody send some camera. <laughs> <laughs> of course it would do that. And if nothing, um, okay, Melissa, if some if you need to close it to reopen it, you can yeah, also do that. I'll I'll do that. I'll be right back. I'm so okay. sorry. <laughs> okay. plan, I, have, I have plenty to say. Okay, um, awesome. no problem. So while Melissa comes back, um, that was huge. You guys know, she just said the biggest mistake some of you make when you're hiring a company to create a reel for you to, to write the scene and shoot it. One of the biggest mistakes is that you are not, you don't know enough about what you want to do. I tell you guys all the time, do I not? I say, study your medium, study your medium. That means study what it is you want to do. Study your type. Who looks like you on camera? I'm back. Right? You're back. Okay. okay. So I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm always telling my audience, Melissa, study your medium. Yes. On TV. What yes. show? Because you may, maybe you don't even know what it means to be single cam or multi-cam. But when I tell you in layman's terms, who looks like you? What kind of roles do you want to do? You want to. What, what is your essence coming across on camera? Because we talked a little bit about this too when we met. Yes. That a lot of actors really do not see themselves clearly when it comes to camera versus in person you will, not, you will not look the same on camera as you look in person you just won't yeah. i mean there's that that age-old adage where it's like the camera adds 10 pounds it depends on what lens they're using <laughs> um you know but but it's important to know how you're coming across when you're on film or when you're on the digital chip um so that you're accurately kind of gauging what it is you're selling does it make right. sense? I feel like no, it's it does. Yeah, it makes sense. And guys, hey, this is a live feed. So Instagram, I know y'all can probably barely hear Melissa. If you want to see my guests, come on, hit my name. Come on over to my Facebook page, okay? Um, but Facebook, you're here. We're live. We're open to your questions, your comments. I get demo real comments, questions all the time. Give them to me. I did it for you. I did a Q and A uh, call with my my mem my membership students and they were talking about reels today. Um, a question, um, well, here's a question from Kathleen. She says, what is your essence on camera? Good point. So you mean, what, are you asking or like you just repeating? But I'm gonna let Melissa take that. So um, let's think about this in terms of actors we've heard of, right? So I feel like Brad Pitt has a very different essence then say, give me another actor that's like really famous. Then uh, like Melissa Kevin Melissa. Hart. Yeah, Kevin or, Hart. Yeah, so like Kevin Hart, right, is a very different kind of energy, a very different kind of product than Brad Pitt is going to be, right? So it's kind of like determining, are you, so like, let's pick a show, pick a show, any show, Christine. Law and Order SVU. Fantastic. Um, are you, is your essence more the person who's going to play a lawyer? Is it more a cop? Is it more a judge? Is it more the strung out drug dealer that they're like interviewing? Is right. it the crying mom who's just lost her child? Like what kind of essence are you bringing to the majority of the roles that you play? 
Right. And another mistake that I think people make when they want to do their reels is that they're trying to be everything for everybody. Woo! Say it, girl. Right. And That's you really cannot do that <laughs> when, <laughs> when you're putting together footage. One, one, yes, you're an actor and all of the roles are within you and you're a multifaceted jewel, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. But you do have a general kind of set of roles that are going to be your bullseye role that are going to get you in the room or get you towards your goals faster. And that's what I mean by specificity is mm -hmm. that you want to be the more specific you are, the quicker you're going to be getting that you know, those guest star uh, auditions, the quicker you're going to be able to get those manager meetings and those agent meetings. If you're trying to do too general of a thing, they will look at you and go, I don't really know what this person is. I don't understand what kind of role she plays. I can't see her in any one thing because it's just so general. I don't understand. You are saying, girl, you are, and this is why you're here because you're yes. speaking, you're speaking <laughs> my language. Um, Instagram, I gotta say goodbye because it's not, I don't feel like you're gonna get, you're getting the full, um, yeah, I'm actually talking about, I don't feel like you're getting the full thing. Come on over to my Facebook page so you can see this interview because all y'all getting is me like, mm hmm, yeah, uh huh. <laughs> what you doing? So come on over to Facebook. I'm gonna end this. Love you guys. All right. So Facebook has my full attention. I also feel like I need to turn down the brightness of my screen because I'm almost see through, Christine. No, so I like white. it. You popping. Your light is popping. <laughs> anyway. And then, you know what? It's something, something I'm always talking to my actors too about colors. That blue is a lovely color on you. Oh, thank you. Yeah. But listen, you know, you're touch, you touched on several things. And I see your comments. I, I'm coming back to them. No, I talk to my actors about knowing who they are. And I drill that down. And we love to say, I'm an actor. I can do everything. Everything, yeah. But the more that you zone in, the more that you are showing and training, and I'm talking about that later this week, the more you're training cast and directors, like, no, I know I do this and this really well. And of course, I can do anything. But we have to train people. So I can't, if I do a reel that's general, I'm only showing more and more that I don't know who I am as an actor. As y'all, we are products. Yes, yes. Yes. Um, when people, one of the good ways to think about doing a reel, whether you come to us or whether you go to somebody else is does the scene, do the scenes that I have on my reel, are they, are they feeling like they're coming from something current? Mm -hmm. Um, do, are, can people look at the scene and go, oh, wow, that looks like this show or this show or this show. Um, or if you have an idea for a scene, what show does that feel like it's coming from? Or what film does that feel like it's coming from? Mm -hmm. And if you can't answer that, then it's not, it's not a strong enough idea. It's not a, it's not a, you know, a specific Pause. enough idea. Yeah. Melissa, please say that again. Which part? If, if, <laughs> it does not, if it does not look like it came from what, please say that again. That's gold, you guys. Yeah, so if it doesn't feel like it's, if it doesn't look like, it's coming from a show or if it doesn't remind somebody of a type of show there that they're seeing right now, then it's not a strong enough choice. It's not a specific enough choice to really get you in the door. Let me give you kind of a really roundabout example. It's not really about reels, but it is about specificity. Mm -hmm. um, so I have a friend who is, uh, she was an actor in New York for a long, long time um, did a lot of like theater and tours and stuff like that. And she decided to move here a little bit before me. And when she moved here, she decided that she was going to solely focus on doing voiceover. Okay. And so she like, it's great because her husband is also a sound supervisor for a couple of TV shows. So they have a recording studio and it's great. But she said to herself, I don't want to pursue camera acting right now. I want to pursue voiceover. And so that's what she did. And she solely pursued that. And because of that laser beam focus, she's incredibly successful now. She's now the uh, voice of Skipper on the new Netflix series for Barbie. Um, and she books or auditions like five times a day. It's crazy. You said and five times a day. Five times a day. She like literally has anywhere from like one to five auditions, usually a day. And usually she's got, she's like recording things, you know, but that would not have happened for her 
if she had tried to split her focus in a million different ways. And so why I'm bringing this up is if you play a, uh, what I call a strong female lead, where you're like, I play the roles of like CEOs or DEAs or, um, you know, strong PTA mom or any of those strong women in charge, lean into the specificity of the roles that you play. And I call it getting rich in your niche. Oh, yeah. If, if they don't know you, you have to give them at least a small set of things that you do very, very well. And then once you get that traction. Get, Melissa, get yeah. those checks. Get those checks. But then also you start to build your credibility and you build your career. This is a long game. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, so, yeah. So, sp like, being specific and really honing down what you do so that, it just gets you further faster. That's kind of the point of my story. <laughs> yeah. No, no I, again, and you guys, especially my people watching, you guys know I talk about this all the time. So I was so happy to meet someone where we were on the same page because, <clears throat> you know, I met, a, I was talking to a woman um, on another call with another coach. Shout out to Erica, the Hollywood success coach. She had me teach some of her actors one day and and she had a client, shout out to Pam, who was kind of fighting the fact that she always gets called in for a mom and wants to do more. And I said, honey, you better work the mom angle all the way to the bank and then take some of that money and do some of the other things you want to do. You know, it's like if that is what you're screaming when you walk in the door, if you're screaming mom, if you're screaming school teacher or nerdy guy or sex symbol or funny, quirky neighbor, like it's not a bad thing. And we have to stop thinking that it speaks to us as a human being. Oh, you know? we had, we had a discussion about this. Do you remember? Yeah. Where, oh, maybe, maybe I didn't talk to you about this. I don't remember who I was talking to this about, but who you play as characters that you do really well is not a reflection of how you are as a human being in everyday life. Correct. So, Correct. right. Like there's an essence that you have on camera and the kind of roles that you do really well. And then there's who you are. Um, right. I can very much remember a job I did where like, I'm just a bubbly personality and I'm really nice. And I was on set and I had been hired to play this absolute like bitch. Right. And the director was sitting there talking with us. And then at the end of the job, I was walking out and the PA comes out and she's like, Hey, I just want to let you know. Um, the director almost recast you like almost flipped your role with the other girl. And I was like, why? And she goes, because you were so nice. He didn't, uh, he couldn't see that you could play this like razor edged mean girl. And mm. then I was able, like, and I was able to do that because that's very much a kind of role that I can play. And, and so that's what I mean. There's a difference between kind of what you can do on camera and what you need to show the, what, the, what product you need to show people and who the real you is. And it's okay that you're not the same. Right. <laughs> And yeah. I'm going to get to some of these comments in just a second, but I, you know, in, before we get to the comments, I think it's I important think it's to say that, excuse me, that's why it's important whatever you choose to put on your reel. And certainly if it's something that you're hiring Rock Your Reel for, or one of the companies in Atlanta or Chicago, wherever, that you are aware of what it is you're trying to sell. Yes. This is not your, op this is not the time to be like, I always wanted to be a superhero. And I just think this is, I'm going to be a superhero today. And it doesn't, oh, sure. and it doesn't, fit, and it does not fit your essence, your vibe or anything. Well, like, there, are, there are also people who perceive themselves to be, perceive themselves to be different than they are. So like, <laughs> I try to say it very politely. There are people who believe that they're like leading man material. Yes. When really they're like the, the wisecracking best friend. Correct. Or like there's a, you know, or they're too young to really be playing leading women. Right. Right. Like you're not. So here's the thing that, wow. Here's the thing that I learned um, after graduating theater school. So did you go to theater school? Cause I don't know. Your I went to AMDA. I went to a musical theater conservatory for okay. one year and then I, okay. started, and I started working. <laughs> Good for you. I have a whole thing about this, but that's another conversation. So what I learned, so you're in theater school or whatever, and you're playing these like super old roles or these really needy roles. And then you graduate at 21 or 22 years old and you're like, I'm going to go and play the lead DEA on NCIS. <laughs> no, 
because they're going to hire a 45 year old woman to play the lead DEA right. or, or law and order. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. So really having a good perception of how old do you, how old do you look on camera? Your essence. I mean, there are sometimes there are girls who are in their twenties who have the essence of a 35 year old because they've just had so much life experience. Right. Um, so, yeah. Anyway. And, and that goes to what I talked to and I'm getting to your questions, guys. I didn't forget about you before we wrap. Um, that's what I talked about yesterday. I talked about really transitioning from Broadway or Broadway shows to television because mm -hmm. in theater, honey, you can be a, a 50 year old woman playing a 20 year old with the right makeup and the, the right lace wig. <laughs> you know? Seriously, theater is different. And so we have to put that mentality to the side. Like you, you, let me tell you, one of my girlfriends used to say, shout out to Drea. She, my, she's a beautiful Filipino girl, but sometimes she looked ambiguous. So she could play Latina or she could be, um, she would be, you know, Filipino. She could be light skinned black. It just depends. And she was like, yeah, that's all good. Until you, she's like, yeah, you can call me in for Latina until I'm in a room with some Latinas. Sure. And then it just becomes clear that I'm not like, you can call me in for 22 until I'm in a room with some real 22 year olds. And then it's just different. Um, so let me go to the questions. Let me go to some of these comments and see what we have here. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you are enjoying because we're getting, this is some nuggets here tonight, y'all. And listen, <laughs> if you want to learn more about rockyourreal.com, I have the link above or below wherever you're watching this. You can come, get in contact with, with Melissa's company. And, you know, as you can see from her, she's, not the kind that's going to blow smoke up your butt. She's going to be like, no, nah, boo, that's a 60-year-old role. You're 25. We need to do something else. And that's the kind of stuff that you need. And so even if you're hiring a company in the state that you're in, be sure you're asking these questions and be sure that whoever you're paying money for to is being upfront with you and not just saying, yeah, this will be great for you. And it's not in your wheelhouse. Okay. Um, Let's see. Jen says, makes perfect sense. You are articulating very well what an actor needs to know about demo reels. So awesome. Glad you think so. Um, Kathleen says, good answers. Thanks, Melissa and Christine. You're welcome. Uh, let's see. Ramissa. What's up, Ramissa in the house? Ramissa. Uh, I know she's based out of Chicago. Uh, Yay, she's I lived in Chicago, Chicago for three months. Yay. Oh, the, the windy. <laughs> very much the windy today, for sure. Said, that's really good info. Know your essence on camera and trying to be everything for everybody in your reels doesn't work. Hashtag gem, hashtag pearls of wisdom. Thank you, Ramisa. Uh, let's see. Kanita, what's up, Kanita? So um, I know Kanita. Kanita lived in Virginia Beach with me and now she lives in Vegas and she's amazing and I love her. Yay, Kanita! I love it. Yes, Kanita. Uh, she said, I know you said you see yourself one way that may be different than how you translate on camera. So what should we go? So what should we go to give us that? Where should we go to get, get that insight? Would it be would it be other actors like a poll or an on camera study class? I think it's all of the above. So I think it's I think it's definitely a poll of your. I think, you know, your friends, unless they are really detached and can really look at you like with a critical eye. The friends might not be a great idea, but an acting class would be good because they know your work, like a teacher. Um, another way that I think is a little less traditional uh, would be to film yourself with like your phone and then, or, or, your, or your camera and really look at what you're doing and how you're presenting on camera and watch yourself over and over again in different types of scenes and see what you're seeing and have other people watch that footage as well. Um, and, and then have them kind of react to that and say, what, what kind what age group do you think I'm in? Do you think what kind of, what status level do you think I'm at? Um, like as far as, you know, am I a, a middle-class struggling mom or am I like a high-class lawyer? Those are two very different essences. Um, but the, you know, the traditional way is always that like ask 10 people and just say, Hey, can I ask you a question? And, uh, you know, looking at me right now, what do you think I look like? And they'll say, oh, you look like an athlete or you look like a mom or whatever. You, you know, and you have them give you adjectives. That's kind of some of the ways that I've heard of people. What do you think? No, I think, I think you're absolutely right. And that's some of the exercises that I do. Actually, I do a whole kind of branding class in one of my yeah. programs. Um, yeah. Because 
I like getting the friend perspective, but then I also like getting total freaking stranger perspectives. So what I'll do is have, I'll have my clients and some of you are in my upcoming uh, <laughs> uh, program, Star Power Elite, um, where I will have them tape themselves. Mm. Like I hear the SAG Foundation in Los Angeles. You don't even do a scene. You just say, hi, I'm Christine Horn. Mm -hmm. so based on how you are, based on how you dress, how your hair is, what your vibe is, people just go up. So I will share that with other clients or friends, random people, and have them fill out a series of, with again, with the adjectives. But with the beauty of strangers is, honey, they have nothing to lose in telling you the absolute truth. Sure. Yeah. Not bitchy. Oh, you seem like one of those douchebags, like from college, or like you seem like you know you could be a, a social worker, or you know, like you know, like a drug addict. Like it's hard to hear that you look you're giving drug addict vibes, but if if that's what you're giving out when you step in, yeah, a room, it's, it's hard. It's hard to hear that you're you're you look like a drug addict until you get a lead role on Breaking Bad and then you make like <laughs> your, your lifetime's worth of money. Sure. You're like, well, what drug <laughs> Am I, is, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, think that's really, I feel like that's a really smart idea to um to do the the stranger questionnaire but with a video rather than you just standing in front of them because again yeah. it's not just how you appear and what your vibe is and how you're how you're connecting with somebody in person, but it's more about what you're connecting like what what kind of thing are you sending through that screen mm -hmm. you know. And especially, um, especially in this day and age, shout out to all my Southeast actors specifically, where 99% of their auditions are on tape. Yep. And so I'm like, if you can master that self-tape and master what you bring in that space, your callback, your producer sessions won't be an issue. Um, let me look back through this because we're going to wrap soon because Christine has three auditions. I told you, Melissa, I was like, it's a crazy day. That's I'm crazy. I've got one to take tonight and two in the morning. Not Ooh. complaining, but I do have to wrap it up. My audience knows I will just talk and talk and talk. <laughs> um, and I'm not going to keep it that night. Um, let's see. Jen says, ooh, that writing's small. Um, OMG, I'm a voiceover artist, and I'm so glad that Melissa acknowledged that the same advice applies because I was just thinking that this is awesome advice for every acting field. Right on. 100%. Thank yeah. you. Um, Rex says, go. That's my friend, Rex. Rex and I went to college together. Okay, okay. <laughs> Go here, here, get it, girl. Laser focus. Yes, Rex. Um, but he also said, great advice, rich in your niche. And I think that is gold. And I, I, I we're yeah. definitely in, in agreement with that. Uh, Drea Castro, that's who I was talking about, my 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 beautiful brown actress who's like Latina, Filipino, don't matter. Wow, what do you yeah. mean? <laughs> that's okay. awesome. Um she says, ah, the struggle of the brown Asian. Hey. Um, I wouldn't see know because I'm see-through. <laughs> <laughs> Pam, Pam. That's my mother-in-law. Mother Yay. Hi, <laughs> yes, thank you for tuning in, Pam. She's awesome. Yeah. Uh, Rachel says, another Shy town in the house. Just now tuning in. Shy town in the house. Can't wait to rewatch. Awesome. Let's see. Kenita says, great advice. TC says, Jules, thank you. Um, let's see if there are any more questions. Here's Sharon Lynn Sharon. God, Sharon, I'm gonna get it right, girl. Sharon. She's out of New York. Um, she says, Good info. Thank you. We'll go back and listen to what I missed. And I also took the SAG workshop and was all in my feelings based on what folks said, but learned a lot. Oh, Sharon, tell me what they said. What was the most shocking thing that they said about you? Oh, oh, she had to stand in front of people and, and oh, you, the well, thing you the SAG yeah. foundation does it where you do, you go to the front of the room and, and then, you know, I look at that. So I look at that headshot, by the way, she is so cute. Yes. And like, she just, she seems like really just from her headshot there, she seems really, um, like I would put her in like really confident, wisecracking roles. She said they yeah. wrote groupie. <laughs> groupie. <laughs> That's funny. Well, this what you came up, she She's also a dancer, very fit, very, very thin, and but curvy, gorgeous. I was going to say maybe they thought you maybe were a little aloof because, you know, she carries herself with such grace. Mm -hmm. um, and then she, said, she said she got grouped from doctor to groupie. Very interesting. I could see her as a doctor on like a Shonda show, for sure. A absolutely a Shonda uh, Rhimes show. But look at the conversation we're having about 
her headshot, right? Which brings me to a thing that I, I wanted to mention earlier is that it's 100% right that you need footage now, right? 100% right. But your footage needs to match the headshots that you have. So if like, I think people need to think of this as a, as a package deal, right? The headshot is what's getting you sort of in the door because they're going through a thousand headshots for every, you know, uh, role that they're casting. Right. But if the footage isn't sort of also bringing the same essence as the headshots are, Whoa. then something is mismatching and then it's going to be confusing. Yes. And yes. as Dallas Travers, I, I know you probably know who Dallas Travers is. Of course. The, the first time I ever heard this was a confused mind says no. no. Yep. Right. So that's what we're trying to do is we're trying to create materials that support the product that you're selling. Um, and if they're not supporting it really truly, then people are going to get confused and they're going to be like, nope, on to the next person. Because let's be real. There are thousands of fabulous actors in each of your towns. And every one of them is bringing it. And so you have to bring it too, right? Yes. I mean, <laughs> you said it. You said it. Guys, if you have any wrap up comments, we're about to head, we're about to wrap this thing up. Melissa, this has been. As I have all, more to say. I have more to say. <laughs> and this is why clearly Melissa and I bonded over at the yeah, yeah. party. Um, because this is so real. Like remembering that each and every one of us, you may you don't have to like it. We're products. And I yeah. teach my actors who work with me how to market that. You know, it's like everybody there's thousands of pens in the world, but what's special about this pen? They well, which all one write, is that? The seven or the five? This is a Seven. Seven? <laughs> That's what I use. <laughs> My husband likes the fives. But see, everybody has a flavor of what they're looking right. for. Yeah. Um, if I could give just like, because not everybody in your audience lives here in LA. And so yeah. they, you know, I will say we do have people that come and fly here specifically for us. Like a guy oh. later on in a couple weeks coming from New York. But anyway, um, some things that I would watch out for or not waste money on <laughs> would Whoa. be. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, anything that's like a, some people, some, some companies have what they call monologue scenes where it's just you and it's like the camera is over somebody else's shoulder, but they never cut back to them for any reactions or anything. And that screams that you made it for a demo reel. Um, right. other people use like auditions, like self tapes as their demo reels. No, boo. Mm -hmm. Um, and there are some companies where it's like they have standing sets, which is cool, but they need to be shot in a way that doesn't feel like a standing set kind of thing. The, mm -hmm. the goal here, like we said before, is for this to feel like whatever show it's coming from. So if this is a modern family or um, a Mindy project, those have very different aesthetics than like, this is us or a multicam sitcom show, you know, like every show that you have is that you want to have on your reel um, for whatever your casting is needs to feel like it's coming from, from that show. So, uh, so yeah. So I would just make sure that whatever company you're hiring can do that kind of thing. And if they can't, then come see us. <laughs> and also um, if you choose to do this stuff yourself, that's a, that's a, risky road to go down for a couple of reasons. One would be um, often people don't understand how to write scenes that are in the structure of how like actual television is written. Mm -hmm. um, or like the production value is just, it's like meh, it feels like a, you, you don't want stuff that, that really feels like a, um, like a student film. Right. You know, if, if that's the quality that, that you can do, then that's not, I, I hate to say, but that's not good enough. Like it needs to be better. It needs to be really, really good. But if you can do those things, great. Do it, do it yourself. But if not, find a company who can work with you on really crafting everything that we've talked about so far. Um, yeah. Y'all, yeah. this is gold. Make sure you play this back. <laughs> um, if you found this video helpful, I don't care if you're watching the replay, or watching it live, give us a hashtag. Yes, this was helpful. Listen, uh, I do have a follow-up question with that I, and I thought it was good, so I'm going to ask it, and then we're going to wrap in a second. But please do us the favor and type hashtag yes if this has been helpful. I know it's been helpful. Um, Sharon also asked, um, is talking on your cell phone for a quick clip a bad idea? Yes. 
There you yes. go. <laughs> it is. And, and, and let's, let's, so I'll tell you why, because that's like a really crappy answer to just be like, yes. And then never talk about it. Right. Um, the, what show would that come from? Right. What show has somebody just talking straight up to a phone and that's all that they're doing. And like, I can't think of any show that has something like that. Because Modern even- Family did it once. They did like a Skype episode, which was really weird. Um, but yeah, I would say save up your money. This is another thing I want to talk about. I know you, you want to get going. Um, but one of the things that I have watched over and over and over again, and I'm sure that you're, that you, the people who work with you are the same is that once people start spending money and investing in their business, it's not even about the product that comes out of it. It's the intention and the and the vibes that you are sending out into the world. Skin Once in the game. your mentality, right? You you put skin in the game and you start your your mentality shifts, and you've you've spent a substantial amount of money creating a reel and a substantial amount of money getting coaching and a substantial amount of money getting your headshots. You will find the doors will open for you that were previously closed because you were not vibrating on that correct vibration plane, right? Right. Um, it happened for uh, my production partner, Lynn. She, we did a web series. She's lived here for almost 13 years. She had never been able to crack the uh, theatrical agent code. The day we wrapped from doing our, uh, the day after we wrapped doing our um, amazing web series, she got a call and got a theatrical agent. Now it's not because she did like she didn't get that agent because of the product of the web series. She got that agent because she was now up leveling her game. And so that's what I would say. Don't waste time doing like self self tapes on your phone or, you know, having your friend use their iPhone to shoot you a reel that's not good enough. Mm-hmm. Spend the time to save up the money. Because people will save and spend what they feel is is they are worth. Girl, don't get me so everything. <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, so, so, you know, it's good to invest in yourself and it's good to spend the time creating the product that is really going to get you in that door quicker. So. <laughs> On that note, listen. Hashtag yes in the comments, y'all. Don't leave us hanging. There's 16 of y'all watching live, and I know there will be hundreds more who watch this later. I'm sure I'll boost this post so more people watch it because this is good stuff. This is nuggets. This is the stuff I'm always talking about. I'm so grateful to have connected with you, Melissa. And you know, this is also a testament to getting outside of your house. We can stay in a little isolated bubble and try to get on our, you know, journey alone. But no, it's like you connect, you meet people, you just have no idea, you know? And so these are nuggets. Play this video back. If you want to find out more about Rocket Reel, I have the link above. It's rocketreel.com. If you need some coaching, you guys know I'm... This whole week is about my level, my group two actors, my, my middle ground who need that, who are trying to work full time as an actor. I'm talking to y'all. If you need that help, click the link above to get uh, connected with me to apply for a strategy session. But this is gold. Melissa's not going to see you the wrong way. Even if you're not in LA, you can still work with her. But it, yeah. I, love how you, I love how you gave tips too. Like, hey, if you're in Atlanta, you hire another company, but look out for these things. Because listen, can we keep it 100? Because we know we always, I always do. Let me hide, yeah. let me put that away. <laughs> Casting directors, producers, they know that you spent money on this reel. They know that it's not from Black Lightning or Grey's Anatomy or whatever. However, the fact that you get it done at a quality level that really showcases you in a major way shows that you can handle that when it's time. They can put, because listen, sometimes it comes down to you and another Ooh. actor for a series regular or even for a big guest star, even a huge co-star role. And every time my manager will be like, hey, Christine, we, they, we need your reel to, so that they can present it. Mm-hmm. And at that point, they want to look at your body of work. So you can't throw in some crap in there because they will choose the other person every time because it just speaks to your level of professionalism. It speaks to your where you are in the game. And so I totally understand. Like I've never personally had to hire uh, a service like yours. 
Well, the idea here is, by the way, we want you to hire us until you no longer need us. This, we are not in this for like repeat customers. Right. We, we want you to work. <laughs> we want you to work. And ideally, my goal for you, for each actor that I would work with, is to have you be repaid through acting gigs within six months to a year. Like that would be this working the best it could, right? Where you're getting like, it suddenly opens all these doors and you get like auditions and suddenly you're in the rooms and you're booking things and you've paid yourself back for the investment that you just spent. Right. Um, I don't want you coming back to me a year <laughs> or two years unless you took time off and you need to refresh right? or you've had a, like some sort of life event that has changed your whole like vibe, like then, yeah. I mean, and if you, if you're having trouble having people see you in that new way, great, come back to us. But the idea here is not for you to like keep coming to us over and over again, like a yeah. headshot photographer, right? Cause right. I used to do headshots and I have people who would come back to me and back to me as you get older or whatever. That's not yeah. what this is. Things, things shift certainly, but at the end of the day, your goal is to work. Yeah. You're doing this right now because you don't have the level of footage. And, you know, too, when you're trying to, again, I'm talking about training casting directors later this week. When you're trying to train casting directors, you got to, what's the product you're selling now? You know, I get some actors that say, oh, I'm just going to wait. I'm going to wait till I lose, lose 40 pounds before I do X. I'm like, no. No, don't do that. No. I'll you know? A lot of actors come to, like, won't hire a real company because they're like, oh, but I have footage coming. Cool. When is that footage coming? Because I, you know what I mean? Like, how long have you had to wait? Unless you <laughs> network, you know, a network show right. or like a film that's coming out in theaters. Like, I have heard the story so many times. I've been waiting on this footage for a year because I thought I could just use that. And then they get the footage and it's not what they want it to be. Or they've moved past where they are. They're a better actor than they, are, than they were when they did that project, you know? Ooh. So, yeah. Yeah. Girl, I think I'm gonna have to have you back another day because do it. I would love to. You have served up so many nuggets. Again, you guys, if this is Actors Daily Bread, ain't no other show out here like this. I already know that. <laughs> I say that with confidence because listen, when I was here in LA struggling back in 2010, 11, I wish I had this information. I wish someone just gave it to me straight. I wish I wasn't sitting at home alone, on unemployment, spending my savings not knowing what I was doing wrong. Now, let now, me ask you a question. When you yes. were back in that time, yes. did you, if you had had, if you, do you think that if you had invested in scenes to help get to, like to help boost you, do you think you would have gotten further faster? Yes. And, but what was necessary that wouldn't have helped was my, I came from the theater. I came from Broadway. Mm -hmm. So I had a year of like, like a year and a half of just, getting coached one-on-one -on -one oh, sure yeah yeah yeah, yeah. all the way in yeah. because i could have easily done paid a, a company like yours and still been too big still been oh, doing too much. Th then this is a really good point whoever you hire make sure that you have a like that they provide uh, a like a really good director um, that's one thing that we really pride ourselves on is that um, my producing partner will often come in as the director while i'm shooting and she is really great at either taming down somebody who is theater based and is used to projecting mm -hmm. or pushing enough to get and really craft that performance. Mm -hmm. You want somebody be, basically your thing. I want you to think of it like you're the executive producer of your scene. Mm -hmm. And as the executive producer, you have to think about the whole product and you have to hire people to get you to give the product that you need to give. Does that make right. sense? Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's good. But so, and then after you had been trained down, if you will, then, uh, you know, would you think that it would have helped you to go a Absolutely. little bit? Because I, yeah. I didn't know anything about these services. Yeah. I didn't. Yeah. And not saying they didn't exist. I had no one saying, hey, Christine, you know what you should probably do is this. Mm -hmm. I had an agent that signed me and never called me. Yeah. I was just on Actors Access every day, like, I hope I find something. And I wish I could have told that girl back then, also, you call them, <laughs> right? Like, you call your call your agent. Again, again, yeah. look, at, look at how life is full circle. Now I teach other actors because yeah. Yeah. I have, I've learned in the trenches. That's all. That's why I tell actors, hey, you want, you want to help skip the line? Let me help you skip the line. And I yeah. feel like you or like the, 
yeah, like save you years is kind of our, yeah, the, like one of our clients said that and we were like, what? That's the best thing I've ever heard. That's yeah. amazing. And so you don't have to hire you don't have to hire me. You don't have to hire you. You don't have to hire a coach, period. That's no. the wrong mentality, though, because we're no, in the business was, of always investing. I was just going to say, like, it's hiring a demo real company is very similar to hiring a um, headshot photographer in that you want to hire somebody who ha it shoots in the styles that you need. So, for mm -hmm. example, if you wanted to do, like, a big action sequence and you needed it to be, like, really rough and tumble, we're actually not the company for you if that's your goal. Mm. Um, because we have, we don't have a lot of experience doing action. I'm doing my first action one here in the next like couple weeks and I'm excited to learn, but like, right. and like, we've had a, we've had, um, actors come to us and they're like, I really want to hire you because I really want to get into multicam sitcoms and you're the only people who have proof that it, you can do it and that it looks just like the real thing. So you want to, it's, it's as if you're shopping for a headshot photographer where every headshot photographer's aesthetic is different right. and you want to go with one who you connect with as a person because mm -hmm. it's terrible to be underneath somebody shooting you who you don't really connect with. Yeah. And then also who can do the kinds of products that you need specifically. Right. So shop around. And if people need um, recommendations, like for somebody in New York, I have a, I have a company that I really respect there. So like, just contact me and I can give you some recommendations. I don't know, if, um, I haven't researched Atlanta, so I don't know who they are, but I could. There are a couple, um, yeah. I could tell you offline, there are a couple who I know a lot of, some of my some of my clients have actually used. And I've Great. seen some footage and it's been, it's been good. Um, yeah, and so, also, yeah. you know, don't care as much about, cause a lot of, a lot of companies are popping up and their, their big thing is like, oh, we don't shoot, shoot on DSLRs, we have a red camera. Cool. But like, is the product good? <laughs> you know, okay. um, does it, does it look, is it, it, you know, how are they framing you and like, how are they editing it and the whole nine? Yeah. Um, so really, you know, do your homework and see who you feel like would be a good vibe for you. Oh. So. All right, you guys, we've been here almost an hour. You know how Ooh. I give, you give, we give, we give, and we could clearly talk a whole lot more. Um, thank you all so much for watching. If you found this helpful, again, hashtag yes in the comments and share this with one actor. Like, girl, you missed a good live tonight. Share it with somebody. This is Actors Daily Bread, episode 129. What does that mean? If you have missed the previous 128 episodes, instead of Netflix, go ahead and binge Actors Daily Bread. There's so many nuggets. There's interviews. If you want to find out more about Melissa Ward, um, Melissa Blue, sorry. I know your whole name is on the screen. Um, <laughs> Click her link above, rockyourreel.com. And again, if you need some guidance, don't know where to turn next, click the link above to uh, connect with me, to get on the phone with me, um, to see what coaching option is best for you. Um, this is a great time to be looking at your footage. You know, mm. episode will pick back up late July, early August. So this is the time to be deleting stuff, adding stuff. This is the time. Don't wait till everything's crazy and then you're trying to put it all together. It's not the best time. And especially if you have representation and you want them to see what you're doing, they don't have that time when it's busy. But now is a sweet, sweet spot. Melissa? This yes, girl. I know. I feel like I just want to hang out with you all the time. <laughs> you know, to be continued, we're, we're neighbors. <laughs> It's all true. right, guys, thank you all so much for watching. Melissa, hang tight. We're going to wrap up offline. But guys, have an amazing night. This is Actors Daily Bread. Stay tuned tomorrow where I will talk about, what's tomorrow? Collaborating with your representation. Collaborating with Ooh, them. Girl. All right, stay tuned for that. And again, I have no idea what time I'm going live tomorrow because I have two auditions. But it'll be late. It'll probably be around this time tomorrow night. Wish I could tell you more, but I can't. All right. Have a good night. Love you guys. See you next time. Bye.